Hi, it's Dwyer. It's gamblersadvisory.com, free site, bettingangle.us, free site. Today is December the 29th, 2018. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about a fight I'm excited about. Let me say this, though. I've tried to bet on this fight, and to my amazement, some venues, I'm going to be vague and ambiguous by design, some venues at which I place bets have enlisted the fight. Not only that, when you're online and you look up this fight and you just type in the word odds next to it, you're not going to find a lot of posted odds on this fight. I haven't found any. Let me say this too. I went to my go-to site, oddschecker.com. That site I will name. And of course, they don't have this fight listed. Even though it is the IBF World Super Middleweight Championship between champion Jose Uscadege and Caleb Plant. Right, folks? Head scratcher. I believe the casinos know the casinos know that this fight is troublesome, right? I'm looking forward to this fight. I'm looking forward big time to this fight. I believe the title changes hands. Those Kattegay, in my opinion, beat Andre Durrell twice. Now, the first fight ended in controversy, etc., right? The second fight, it's clear. Simply too much power, simply too much explosiveness. I believe when you have a well-known fighter like Andre Durrell and he gets methodically beaten up by a power-punching explosive fighter and those fights are all over. And when you have controversy that draws the attention of the boxing public into that first fight, right? I believe that's what the public thinks about. Even though I haven't seen the odds on this fight, the fact that Uskadege is the champion, the fact that he has fought the better known competition, the fact that he looked explosive and powerful against Andre Durrell is likely to make him the favorite in this fight. Also, the fact that Caleb Plant has only 17 pro fights. But make no mistake, the bet I'm recommending here is to take Caleb Plant to win the title. Yes, the underdog with less than 20 fights. Hedged with the champion, Uskadege, by KO. Right? I use a phrase here online from time to time. I'll say, you know, this fighter is defensively blessed. Right, folks? Caleb Plant is defensively blessed. If you want to know what I mean about defensively blessed, what I want you to do is to pull up this guy's videos. Right? This guy is good. I understand. He's been fighting the milkman, uh, the mailman, uh, the guy behind the counter at the local department store. I'll agree. He hasn't been fighting world-class top fighters, right? I guess you can call Rogelio Medina a fighter who fought people like James DeGale and roughed up DeGale, right? A world-class fighter. Okay, we'll give Medina that, right? And Caleb Plant, when that fight happened, was dominant. It looked like a pro fighter against an amateur fighter. Caleb Plant's using the entire ring. He made Medina look slow. Look predictable. Look like Jamal Charlo looked against Matt Karabaugh for the first half of their recent fight. That's what great defensive fighters do to you. You know, the gamblers in Vegas have a phrase. They say that New England Patriot head coach Bill Belichick in the National Football League forces a team, his opponent, 
to play left-handed, right? He takes away your plan A. What I want people to realize is that often when you see a fighter having an off night, when you see a fighter unable, unable to throw his best punches, look sluggish, look tentative, look lethargic, often that's because of the defense that his opponent is throwing. Now I view Uskadege as a mid-range hooker. He wants to come at you, get mid-range, Understand, he's not coming in at a side profile. He's not throwing a jab, trying to soften you up, trying to create an opening for a right hand, right? This isn't the fighter Vladimir Klitschko was. This isn't the fighter Anthony Josh was trying to be, right? No, no, this guy is a mid-range hooker. Change the angle, not jab and he's outside and he's leaning. No, think two-handed attack, power shots. The guy wants to open you up with hooks. He wants you to be just far enough away from him so he can throw a hook with full power, full leverage on it, right? And hit you with it. Think Danny Garcia, right? But there's a difference between Escadegue and Garcia. Garcia actually has a mode where he can hit you with a jab. Look at the Eric Morales fight. Also, Garcia is a little bit more advanced, in my opinion, in throwing hooks. In other words, Garcia leans his head down, looks away from you, when the hand is here, you don't know if it's going up top or down low. Murat Gassiev, another guy, right? Uskadege is a little bit more obvious. He comes in, you know where his punches are going to be. You know he's going to try to unload. If you're Andre Durrell, a little bit older, a little bit battle-worn, Right? From fights with people like Arthur Abraham, Carl Froch. Right? If you've slowed down a bit, you can't get out of the way of these shots. You're going to end up with your back up against the ropes. You're going to end up getting pounded by this young lion in his late 20s. Right? Make no mistake. Uskadege is ferocious. The problem is the level of fighter he's facing. I believe, and it's just a bias. Maybe it's fair, maybe it's unfair. It's made me some money. I believe that defensive guys are just mentally ahead of fighters who rely on offense. I believe that a fighter like a Floyd Mayweather, and I believe Floyd's competitive advantage was the fact that he outthought opponents, right? Great athlete, but really a thinking man's athlete. I believe a Floyd Mayweather knew more about Manny Pacquiao than Pacquiao knew about him. When you look at the Caleb Plant tapes, you're going to notice that Plant is moving to locations before his opponent throws the punch. The Medina fight, folks, that's a complete mismatch. Right? Plant knew that Medina was a pressure guy. By the way, just like Uskadege. Plant, I'm sure, knew that Medina came forward, kept coming forward against James DeGale. Had DeGale backing up, was beating up DeGale as he came forward. Forced DeGale to fight him. So Plant, of course, is pivoting. He's not going straight back. This is defensive brilliance. He's moving laterally, right? As he moves laterally, as Medina turns to try to catch up with him, he has Medina walking into punches. Well, nobody walks into more punches, in my opinion, than stylistically a mid-range hooker. Understand, these guys are committed to throwing volume, 
right in or very close to the pocket. So Uskatege is going to be trying to shorten the distance between the fighters. What you're going to find is that Plant's defense involves spacing, where he's not going to let he's not going to let Uskatege get mid range. Right? I thought one of the best moments of the recent Jamal Charlo Karobov fight, and that fight, wow, that's a full course on how to box. There's a moment there in the fight, in fact, there are a few moments there in the fight where Charlo tries to get going from about this distance, and Karabov just collapses the pocket. Doesn't even throw punches, folks just collapses the pocket, has thought it through, has his hands like this. Then with the referee on the other side of Charlo, you'll notice that Karabov then would free a hand and start hitting Charlo in the body with it. That's the kind of stuff Khaled Plant can do. Understand he's a defensive guy, real analytical mind, right? Don't fall for the persona. He's like a poker player. The persona has him with a beard and, you know, one or two word responses to interview questions. And, you know, he's kind of looking laid back and, you know, barely knows he's at the arena. Right. The reality is that this guy is sharp. The persona is a construct. Right, this guy knew what Medina was gonna do on a level that James DeGale did not. Right, understand, Khaled Plant hardly gets hit in that fight. Contrast that to the way DeGale looks beaten up after the Medina fight. He's in against another pressure fighter, Uskatege. I'm just telling you that Plant already knows what Uskatege is gonna do because Uskatege lives off that mid-range hooker style, right? He knows what Uskadege is going to do just like right now. Mikey Garcia knows exactly what Errol Spence is going to do. I understand. This is not the popular narrative. Great. Going against where the popular narrative is wrong is how you make money. So you're going to have a hard time finding odds on this fight. What usually happens is the day of the fight, the morning of the fight, some of the casinos to take care of their gamblers will then release odds on this fight. You need to be ready. If you see a plus next to Caleb Plant's name, if you're getting better than even money odds, I don't care if it makes sense or not. Guy has less than 20 pro fights. Guy hasn't fought the level of opposition whose categories fought. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put money on Khaled Plant. I'll hedge the play with Uskatege by KO. Maybe the stage is too big for Plant. Right? First title fight, world title fight. Maybe he's standing around the side of the ring like Andre Durrell did. Uskatege collapses the ring and then he's dealing with a two-handed attack. That could happen. Or maybe you see Plant alternating between a back foot and a front foot, but not staying stationary at mid-range. Maybe you notice Uskatege looks uncomfortable, looks befuddled, has lower volume, is throwing his trademark punches, but missing by this much, right? You know what? Even if they have, we'll call them house judges. You know the type. The guy is getting comped. They give the guy a hotel room. They say, hey, come to this fight. It's a title fight. You know, this is a young lion champion. Look at this crowd. You know, this champ is pulling in a lot of fans, right? And you know, three scorecards, one always has the favored fighter, never the underdog the favorite fighter, winning the fight by five or six rounds, right? Even house judges 
are going to have a hard time denying Plant because Plant is just too flashy compared to Uskadege. Uskadege's explosive needs to come and unload. You know things are different when he can't do that. Right? It's like watching Mike Tyson Buster Douglas. You're looking at that fight and you're saying, why isn't Mike throwing punches? <laughs> then you start saying, gee, why is Mike getting hit with counters? By the end, you realize Mike's been schooled. Right? Even the house judge who says, oh, wow, Mike Tyson, he's good for the sport. Wow, he's popular. Look at these fans. Hey, Mike Comp hotel room was great. That buffet I had was spectacular. But, you know, I want to work with this promoter. I want to work with this sanctioning body going forward. Right? Voting for Tyson could get me all that. Even that guy, by the sixth round, would have to say, Wow, Mike's not looking like Mike tonight. This other guy is landing some shots. <laughs> you know, maybe I need to give this other guy some rounds. To sum up, I'm expecting an upset here. I like Khaled Plant to win the title hedged with the champ by KO. Let me say this too. This Plant guy is dangerous. Right? Now that the Gale has gotten a little bit older, I don't think you have this level of defense at 168 pounds. Let me also say too, as you look at Uskadege, Mid-range hooker, heavy on offense, front foot heavy. I need for you to think about Caleb Smith, right? If Excuse me, Callum Smith, right? Just understand, this guy is very much like Callum Smith, right? Both guys are tall. Both guys are size guys. Both guys are offensive. Both guys like to throw hooks with both hands. Both guys are looking to mix it up with you. If Plant makes Uskadege look as bad as I think he's going to, then you need to pencil him in as someone who can beat Callum Smith. I don't care what the public narrative is. Right? Let me say this too. If Uskadege, who's offensively blessed, can't find Plant's body, you need to consider how Canelo who's slower handed than Uskadege, would be able to find Plant's body if the two of them fought, right? I know these are big names. I know I'm going to hear from their fans. Fair enough. I know Callum Smith is unbeaten. Fair enough, right? I believe there is a level of the sport. This is not going to sound kind, but there's a level of the sport where you can't be married to one style. You can't be a mid-range hooker at a certain level of the sport because you're then going to run into the Keith Thurmans as Danny Garcia did, right? You're then going to run into guys who know how to make you look too predictable and make you pay for not being flexible enough. Right? The thing with the James DeGale is that DeGale can change styles. Right? He can tailor his style to what you're doing. Right? To me, those are the most dangerous fighters. Caleb Plant might be that kind of fighter, certainly on film, against lesser competition. The guy has a defensive awareness that most don't have. I'm calling the upset here. I like Plant. 17 pro fights. It could be two pro fights. I couldn't care less. The film is the film. I like Plant to win hedged with Uskadege by stoppage. But understand the risk involved. If Plant shows up and he's just dazzled to be fighting in Southern California or wherever they're fighting, right? If he is lackadaisical and doesn't understand the moment, like Erickson Lubin was against Jermel Charlo, 
right? Do you remember that fight? I thought Lubin had a clear shot at the title. He shows up in the first round. He should have had a camera around his neck. He looked like a tourist, right? He's hanging out. Jamel Charlo loads up, closes the show. Fight doesn't even go three minutes. If Plant shows up lackadaisically, right, in his big moment, and allows this offensive freight train to start throwing mid-range hooks, right? If he gets beaten up, shows courage, goes the distance, you lose it all, right? If Fuscatagay wins by decision. If Plant gets stopped, we're cool with that. The hedge held. If Plant wins the fight, as I suspect, you should get better than even money. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.